Insha'Allah ta'ala, we will start our lesson today. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam said in a hadith, Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim. This means that there is a portion of the religious knowledge that is obligatory upon the accountable person to acquire. So there is a portion of the religious knowledge which the person who is accountable is obligated to learn. This means if this person falls short in acquiring this knowledge, he or she would be sinful for not having learned that. Also, the scholars said among what people need the most of nowadays is learning the religious knowledge. For when the person learns the religious knowledge by learning it and applying its teachings, this is what leads to paradise. For if you give people lots of money or food, but you do not give them the religious knowledge by which they protect themselves from beliefs that are incorrect, by which they protect themselves from committing sins, this is not what would lead them to a paradise. So what helps them reach paradise is learning the religious knowledge and applying its teachings, knowing what is opposite to the belief so that one avoids that, learning what are the sins so the person does not commit them, and of course, learning what the obligations are in order for the person to fulfill the obligations. Insha'Allah ta'ala, we will start by talking about the chapter of belief. This is the habit of the scholars. They start by what is more important, and after that, they move on with the rest of the topics. So I remind you, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, to have a sincere intention in your heart when attending this lesson, seeking reward from Allah Ta'ala. Insha'Allah Ta'ala, we will start by talking about the two testifications of faith. So it is obligatory upon all accountable persons to embrace the religion of Islam and to remain steadfast to it and to comply with what is obligatory upon them of its rules. This means it is an obligation, not a choice, rather an obligation upon the person who is accountable to become a Muslim if this person is not already Muslim. So if the person is Muslim, Great, very good. But if this person is accountable and not Muslim, it is an obligation upon this person to become a Muslim. Who is the accountable person who we are talking about? The accountable person, as defined by the scholars, is the person who is pubescent, sane, meaning not crazy, and heard the call of Islam, the basic call of Islam, such as if he heard the two justifications of faith in the call to the prayer, in the adhan, in a language that he understands. Okay, so he heard it in Arabic because the call of the prayer is in Arabic. Or if he heard the two justifications of faith in another language, that means he heard the call of Islam. And we said he is sane, meaning not crazy, and he is pubescent. Pubescent meaning he reached puberty. Okay, so how does the boy reach puberty? The male becomes pubescent by one of two things, whichever comes first. Either this boy sees his mene, which is his um, semen ejaculate. So if he sees that first, or if he reaches 15 lunar years of age. We're talking about lunar month per the Islamic calendar, because as you know, the month, the Islamic month is either 29 
or 30 days. Okay, and you know Ramadan is either 29 or 30 days. So then, if this male reached 15 lunar years of age, which is about 14 and a half years per the Roman calendar. So if he reached this age, 15 lunar years of age, or if before that he had his semen ejaculate, his mani came out, if that happened before that, before reaching 15 lunar years of age, it means he is pubescent. As for the female, she becomes pubescent by one of three matters, whichever comes first, okay? The first two are the same as the male. So either she sees her, mene. In Arabic, it's the same term used for both females and males. It's called mene. So if she sees her, mene, the corresponding sexual fluid of the females, or she attains 15 lunar years of age, or if she starts having her menses, her menstruation, her menstrual cycle. So whichever comes first with the female, then it means she is pubescent. So then if the person is pubescent, sane, and heard the call of Islam, this means this person is accountable. Mukallaf in Arabic. And if this person is accountable and not Muslim, it is an obligation for this person to embrace Islam right away. And this is what is of benefit to this person. When we're saying an obligation, yes, it is. And it is what helps this person. For if the person dies as a believer, eventually he will end up in paradise where he will remain forever. Even if the person first was admitted to hellfire for a period of time, because of enormous sins that he committed and died without repenting from them, and Allah did not forgive them, he will first be admitted to hellfire for a period of time, but eventually this person will be in paradise because he died upon the proper belief, which is Islam. So if the person is accountable and not Muslim, he, is, he or she is obligated to become a Muslim, how does one do that? By saying the two testifications of faith in any language. This does not have to be in Arabic. So we do not tell the person, wait until I teach you Arabic. No, one can say the two testifications of faith or what gives their meaning in any language to embrace the religion of Islam. And the person is not to uh, delay this, per this one who wants to embrace Islam. We should not delay them. We do not tell them, go think about it. We do not tell them, go take a bath first. We do not tell, tell them, but you know, in Islam, there are rules, think about these rules and then come back. No, right away, we guide the person to become a Muslim by saying the two justifications of faith. A note here, dear uh, brothers and sisters, the person has to say the name of the Prophet السلام, correctly when saying the two shahada. And as you know, the name of the Prophet السلام, is Muhammad. He is not Muhammad. He is not Muhammad, for example. His name is Muhammad. So it is said with the Arabic letter Ha. Now, what if this person is not able yet to say the letter Ha? So we guide them to say, Abel Qasim is the messenger of Allah. This is the also what the Prophet والسلام, was known by. So if the person cannot say the letter Ha correctly when saying the name Muhammad, so we tell them, say, no one is God except Allah. And Abel Qasim is the messenger of Allah. This is valid for them to become a Muslim. So now if this person is Muslim, then he or she has to remain steadfast to Islam until death so that they die upon the proper belief. They have to remain steadfast upon Islam and to follow the rules. So one complies with its rules. One fulfills the obligations 
and refrains from the sins. This means the person has to learn what the obligations are in order to do them and what the sins are in order to avoid them. Now, I will quickly give you some examples of people who are not accountable so that you will be aware of that. We said if the person was accountable and died and was not a Muslim, this person will be forever in hellfire. Okay, why is that? Because they were accountable, they were obligated to become a Muslim, but they did not. So if they died as accountable, disbeliever, non-believer, a kafir, they will be in hellfire forever. Even if they were 16 years of age, 15 years of age, 14 years of age, even if their parents were Muslims. Because some people, they tell you, but my dad is a sheikh. Well, even if your dad is a sheikh, if you do not have the proper belief, this is not of benefit to you. You have to have the proper belief yourself. Now, who is not accountable? If a child died and he was saying he heard the call of Islam, but he was not pubescent, okay? He was not pubescent. For example, a six-year-old, a seven-year-old. Even if his parents were non-Muslims, this child will go to paradise if he died and he was not pubescent because it means he was not accountable. I will repeat this so that it's clear for everybody. This is now an example of a person who died and was not accountable. And since this person died and was not accountable, he will go to paradise. He will not be tortured in hellfire. An example of that is a person who died and was not pubescent, such as a child who is five years old, six, seven, eight. He might have died being sane and heard the call of Islam, but was not pubescent. So since this child was not pubescent, it means the child was not accountable, okay? So even if his parents were Christians, were Jewish, this child will go to paradise because he died and he was not accountable. A second example is if a child was pubescent, if a person was pubescent and heard the call of Islam, but this person was insane his whole life. From the, from the whole life, his, he was insane, okay? So he was pubescent, and after becoming pubescent, he remained insane until death. And we said for the person to be accountable, he has to be pubescent and sane and heard the call of Islam. So if this person was pubescent and heard the call of Islam, but was insane, it means what? It means he was not accountable. So even if this person dies at the age of 50, 60, lived all their lives not being Muslims, even if this person lived his whole life uh, not being a Muslim, this person is not accountable. Why? Because he was insane, meaning crazy. Okay? Barakallahu bikum. So then this person would be in the hereafter in paradise. He or she will not go to hellfire. And the third example that we will give is of a person who was pubescent and sane, but never heard the call of Islam. Never. For example, he lived in, a, in an area, in a remote area, where they never heard no one is God except Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Might there be these kinds of people nowadays? Maybe they exist. God knows. So if this person exists, he never heard the call of Islam and he died worshipping stones, for example, or worshipping animals like some people do. This person, if he died and he was not accountable because he never heard the call of Islam, then 
this person will also eventually go to paradise in the hereafter. They will not go to hellfire, okay? That is because when they died, they were not accountable, okay? So as for the accountable person, now this person who is accountable and is Muslim, they have to comply with the rules of the religion and brothers and sisters in Islam, being a Muslim is the greatest blessing one can have in this life. You know, money, as you know, comes and goes. Your health might come and go. Pain, suffering, happiness, sadness, they come and go. But what you should always preserve is the proper belief. For this is the greatest endowment a person can have in this life. And this is what saves the person from being forever in hellfire. Subhanallah. And we can see that the level of um, faith varies. Some people, their belief is more complete than others. They're Muslims. This is a Muslim and that person is a Muslim as well. But this person, for example, his belief is more complete than another person. So we should strive in this blessed month to have our faith be more and more complete. And this is by fulfilling the obligations and staying away from the sins. Even if it is a small sin, don't say it's just a small sin. Even if it is a small sin, it is not okay. It is not okay to disobey the creator who endowed upon me with so many blessings. And you notice nowadays there are so many people who are deprived of many things that we have and that we might be taking for granted, such as water, such as water, such as electricity, such as having clothes to cover our body to keep us warm. There are people, there are Muslims that are deprived of these things nowadays. Yet you see many of them strong in their belief. They do not leave out the prayer. They still say, Alhamdulillah. And yes, we say Alhamdulillah when inflicted with hardships. We still say Alhamdulillah. We thank Allah because we still have many, many more endowments. And we say, Alhamdulillah, that this hardship that we are afflicted with is not worse. And it could have been something that is worse, that is more severe. Okay? So yes, we praise Allah at all times. So among what one must believe in his heart and know all the time and utter if the person is not a Muslim, is the two testification of faith. So one should, if not a Muslim, he says them to become a Muslim and should always believe firmly in the meaning of the two testifications of faith. Inshallah, we will talk about their meaning briefly. So the Muslim, when does the Muslim say the two shahada in the prayer? Because you know, Part of the prayer is to say at tahiyyat And when we are saying at tahiyyat we are saying the two testifications of faith. <laughs> the person can also say the two shahada just like that as dhikr, for example. So the two shahada are ashhadu an la ilaha illallah which means I testify that no one is God except Allah and I testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Okay, The person should firmly believe in the meaning of the two testifications. There are people who know that the Prophet السلام, is truthful. They know that he is a messenger of Allah, but they do not accept that in their hearts. But the believer, when he is saying the shahada, 
he accepts the meaning of the shahada in his heart. So it is then to say the two shahada and to believe in it firmly, to accept the meaning of the shahada in one's heart. So the meaning of Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah means that no one is God except Allah. This means I believe and I know in my heart and I declare with my tongue that nothing is worshipped rightfully except Allah. Okay, so only Allah Ta'ala deserves to be worshipped. Nothing is worshipped rightfully except Allah. Notice I am saying rightfully because there are people nowadays who worship other than Allah. But whatever they are worshipping other than Allah is not worshipped rightfully. It does not deserve to be worshipped. So there are people who worship a human being. There are people who claim that they are worshipping Jesus. They say that he is their Lord. Prophet Jesus السلام, is a prophet. Isa is a prophet. Muslims love him. Muslims believe in him as a messenger of Allah, but Muslims do not worship him. We do not worship Prophet Isa. We do not worship Prophet Muhammad. Muslims worship the creator who is Allah Ta'ala. So there are people who worship a creation such as a human. This is worshipped unrightfully. There are people who worship cows or maybe other kinds of animals. I do not know, but these are worshipped unrightfully. Whether they worship a statue and they call it Buddha, this is worshipped unrightfully. Okay, so only Allah Ta'ala deserves to be worshipped. Only Allah Ta'ala is worshipped rightfully. Allah Ta'ala is Al-Wahid. And you've probably heard this term, Al-Wahid. What does it mean when we say about Allah Al-Wahid? It means that God does not have partners to him in Godhood, okay? So we do not associate partners with Allah. We only worship Allah and we do not associate partners with Allah, okay? So Allah is Al-Wahid and Allah Ta'ala is Al-Ahad. What does Al-Ahad mean? Some scholars said Al-Ahad has the same meaning as Al-Wahid which is that Allah has no partners to him in Godhood. And some scholars said Al-Ahad means that Allah is indivisible. And of course, this is correct because Allah Ta'ala is not a body. So he is indivisible. He is not a body. He cannot be, he is not divided. Okay. He is not a body, whether a tangible body, meaning what can be, grasped by the hand or an intangible body what cannot be grasped by the hand an example of tangible bodies is like a, a tree like a table like a stone you can grab it you can hold it with the hand this is a tangible body intangible body is like light like air you cannot grasp it with the hand this is intangible body God created both of these types of bodies and God is not like any of these. God is not a body, okay? So Allah Ta'ala is Al-Ahad, meaning he is indivisible. And Allah Ta'ala is Al-Awwal. This means that his existence has no beginning for he is the creator. Whatever has a beginning, brothers and sisters in Islam, whatever has a beginning, it means it is created. It means it is in need of a creator who created it. This whole world has a beginning. God created it. Okay? It did not exist. Allah created it. Now it exists. The skies did not exist. Now they exist. Earth, the same. As for Allah Ta'ala, his existence has no beginning because he is the creator. So Allah Ta'ala existed eternally, meaning without a beginning, without a place, for there was no place. In eternity, there was no place. 
we just said that the place is created. So Allah Ta'ala existed eternally without a place. And God does not change. The belief of Muslims is that Allah does not change. The creator does not change. So after creating all places, the skies and earth, God still exists without a place as he did before creating them. So Allah Ta'ala exists without a place. He does not occupy the sky. He is not in the sky. He is not on earth. He is not on the throne. So what do Muslims say? Muslims say Allah exists without a place and without a direction. Okay, so places and directions are created. Allah Ta'ala is Al-Awwal, meaning he has no beginning to his existence. And he is Al-Hay. Al-Hay, meaning that he is attributed with life that is not like our life. He is alive and does not die. His life is not with a soul, not with flesh, not with a body, okay, not with blood. His life is not like our life. Allah Ta'ala is alive. And he is Al-Qayyum. Al-Qayyum meaning he does not need any of his creation. Okay, The creation needs Allah. We need Allah. We need the mercy of Allah. But Allah Ta'ala is not in need of any of his creation. Allah Ta'ala is a daim it means the everlasting. It means that his existence has no end, okay? He does not perish. The existence of Allah has no beginning and no end. All attributes of Allah have no beginning and no end, and they do not change. This is a rule that I would like you to always Remember and believe firmly in your heart in this rule. And that is that Allah Ta'ala does not change and his attributes do not change. The existence of Allah has no beginning and no end. And the attributes of Allah have no beginning and no end. Allah Ta'ala is the creator, Al-Khaliq. What do we mean when we say that Allah Ta'ala creates it means he brings things from non-existence into existence. This is only said about Allah. Only Allah creates with this meaning. Only Allah brings things from non-existence into existence. We cannot do that. We do not create anything with this meaning that I just said, with the meaning of bringing from non-existence into existence. We cannot do that. A creation cannot create. A creation is itself created. And what is created cannot create. So Allah Ta'ala is the creator of everything, of entities and of deeds as well. So he created us and our actions as well. For example, my movement. This hand movement that I'm just doing right now, Allah Ta'ala is the creator of it. I acquire the movement. But if Allah Ta'ala does not create the movement, it would not happen. Okay? The movement would not exist. And you know that there are people who are not able to stand up. And this is proof that they do not create their own movements. Okay, they cannot, they would like to stand up, but they're not able to. So they do not create their movements. So Allah Ta'ala is the creator of entities and of deeds and of our actions. And note, my brothers and sisters, Allah is the creator of actions, whether these actions are good or bad. God is the creator of both. He is the creator of everything. Who created devil? Satan. In Arabic, we say ash-shaytan. Who created him? Allah. And the devil, Satan, is bad. So Allah Ta'ala is the creator of both good and evil, of both. However, Allah Ta'ala orders us to do the good and forbids us from doing the bad, the evil. Okay? So the creator of both is Allah. And 
we as accountable people, we are obligated to do what is good and we should refrain, stay away from what is bad, from the evil. Allah Ta'ala is the sustainer. That means he is the one who provides us with our sustenance, okay? Whether, again, the sustenance is from a lawful source or not, the sustainer is Allah. But as we said, we should seek our sustenance from a lawful source, okay? We should not resort to sinful ways to acquire our sustenance, no. We rely on Allah, for we know the sustainer is Allah Ta'ala. So we rely on Allah, even in times of difficulty. When we are going through hardship, when we, for example, are poor and not able to afford lots of things, we should abide by the rules of the religion and comply, not resort to uh, committing sins when we want to acquire our sustenance. Be patient even when we have little sustenance. And Allah Ta'ala knows best. Inshallah, we will continue tomorrow in our lesson. I would like us, before we end, to say together the tahleel. I ask Allah Ta'ala to enable us to fast this blessed month of Ramadan and to grant us sincerity in performing the good deeds and to grant us seeing the night of Al-Qadr and to enable us to make dua within the night of Al-Qadr. We'll say together, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Rabbi aghfir li wa lil mu'minina wal mu'minat. Rabbi aghfir li wa lil mu'minina wal mu'minat. Rabbi aghfir li wa lil mu'minina wal mu'minat. May Allah Ta'ala bless you.